third parties are really hard to establish in America. But if the Republican Party continues down this road and continues imploding, um, I wouldn't rule out the possibility that um, a third party, at least in some states, um, perhaps in some state and local elections, could take hold. That's and an, what they've done is handed her a enormous platform. That's an interesting way to think about it, that it could be more successful in certain places than in others. I'm thinking of it nationally, but you're right that if you look at it state by state, that is a, a different calculus. Elise, here's a little of what Congresswoman Liz Cheney told our own Savannah Guthrie in an exclusive interview. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? I, I intend to be the leader, uh, one of the leaders, in, in a fight to help to restore our party, in a fight to bring our party back to substance and principles, uh, and in a fight to, to make clear that we won't participate in, in a really dangerous effort that's underway. At least, given that for a long time she did go along with former President Trump, is she really suited to be that leader? And regardless, I wonder who is going to follow her. And by that mean, is the question of leadership here really about getting voters to follow in suit? Or is it about getting more of these grass tops, big name leaders to follow where she's leading? Well, Alicia, you look at the aftermath of January 6th and Republican leadership, they were where Liz Cheney was. They were decrying the insurrection that Donald Trump incited. They blamed it on Donald Trump. Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy himself said that Donald Trump played a role. It's really been in as that didn't gain any political steam and as the leadership couldn't make any headwinds with the base that they decided that it was time just to go back to the same old political calculus of supporting Donald Trump, who lost the election. So there you have it. And you have Liz Cheney, who is an old school, I think, a Republican relic from the past. I think that Republican Party is gone. I agree with Jennifer that the Republican Party is beyond salvage at this point. And it's wishful thinking to think that in any way, shape or form that this can be salvaged when the party can't even agree on basic facts such as Joe Biden won a free and fair election. Megan, in an opinion piece for MSNBC author and journalist Sophia Nelson writes, ironically, Representative Elise Stefanik has worked for years to recruit and support Republican women running for office. And now we see her kicking another woman when she's down, attacking the lone female voice in the leadership caucus for not kowtowing to this Republican Party's twisted, non-existent election fraud claims. As you well know, Megan, I have sort of this question about whether or not voters themselves are watching uh, a leader leadership fight on Capitol Hill, and that is actually going to, to move their party identification anyway. But I do wonder, if you are a woman who has thought about running for office as a Republican and you are watching this all go down, what are you thinking? Well, I think above all else, it's it's just incredibly disappointing, especially specifically with Elise Stefanik. You know, when she first started her pack to support female candidates, EPAC, it was huge because she was kind of doing at the time the the un, undone. You know, she was supporting female candidates in primaries against other Republicans. And that was something that the NRCC wasn't doing. The NRSC wasn't doing. So many big packs weren't doing. Um, and so that was huge. And I think to us, at least, that signaled kind of, uh, you know, her and so many other Republican women really getting ready to to shake things up within the party to kind of challenge and get rid of these really worst of the worst middle-aged white men that were in so many of these districts. But, you know, and unfortunately for Elise and really, I think, for so many Republican women, whether they're just voters or uh, potential candidates for office one day, she's really kind of turned out to be nothing more than an opportunist. You know, she didn't support Trump very early on, which I thought gave a lot of us a little bit of excitement, at least at some point. Um, but as soon as she, she tasted blood and I think saw an opening to climb that ladder, she did a full 180 and decided that she was going to be Trump's best friend, which I think is difficult when you have women like Marjorie Taylor Greene in your party. So I think it's shameful. I think a lot of women are ashamed and kind of embarrassed. That this is their one female in leadership. She's perpetuating the big lie. And I think she's helping, has helped to kick out the truth tellers so she can gain more personal power. Um, and I think, sadly, it's going to come back to bite her. Uh, as, as Elise and Jennifer have said so many times, you know, this iteration of the Republican Party isn't sustainable. 
um, nor are all the lies that she and, and the rest of the leadership are continuing to tell. And I think the voters see that, the donors see that, and despite most voters having no idea who Elise Stefanik is, um, I think they, they know a sham when they see one. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.